Hey everyone, welcome back to Wix Fix. I hope you're having a fantastic day. My name is Ryan and today's video is another episode of our e-commerce mini series. Now for the first video of this part in the series, I showed you guys how to design your custom product page. However, I am not very good at code. So we're bringing on Ethan from the WixWiz YouTube channel. Of course, I'm gonna leave the link to his channel in the description below. I really ask that you guys go subscribe to his channel. He is a Velo genius. But Ethan is gonna be here for the next several episodes in the series to help bring that design that I made to life. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass the baton over to Ethan and he's gonna show you how it's done. So now that we've transformed our custom product page into a dynamic page, we now have access to the data of that specific product through the data set. So what I'm gonna be showing you now is how to access that data and how to start connecting some of the basic info on this custom product page to the data from the product. So I'm going to hop into the IDE and I'm going to go to this specific product page. So here we have here products item. You see that right over here. And I'm gonna click that. And this is where we're gonna be writing the code for this custom product page. So first I'm just gonna add in the on ready for this page because I see that it isn't here yet. So I'm going to add in on ready. And here we're going to have a function. And essentially all the code that we're going to be writing is going to be inside of this function. When you open the page, you may or may not already see this on ready function because most of the Wix pages have that already out of the box when you open them. Okay, so now that we have our on ready function set up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the data set. And in order to do that, I'm going to use $W and then the name of or the ID of the data set and we call that products data set if you recall and now inside of that data set I can tap into something that's called get current item and since each one of these data sets on the dynamic page essentially only represents one item that will just get the item that is attached to that specific page. And if I want to, I can also store the value of this item inside of a variable. So I'm just going to call it const product. And I'm going to say that that equals to the current item from the data set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a console log. So console dot log, and I'm just going to log that product. And I'm going to go ahead and go here now into preview mode. Okay, so I'm going back to the editor and I'm gonna go into preview mode. You could also publish and check this out on the console on your live site. And we're going into preview mode and let me open up the developer console. And you can see over here that now we have something logged here in the console and essentially this is the product. Okay, so here we have all of the information about the product that's inside of the product collection. And we can use this data to populate the individual elements on our page. So before we do that, I'm just going to go and rename some of the elements. So let's go over here. And first of all, we have the product name and the renaming we're all gonna do here inside of the code panel here on the side. And if you go over here to where it says ID, this is where you can essentially rename that element. So I'm gonna call this product name. And now I'm gonna select another item. So let's, for example, select here the SKU. So I'm gonna select the text that's right over here. And I'm gonna call this product SKU capitalized and let's go over here and select so here we have the pricing so here we have two things we have the discounted price and we have the original price uh, let me zoom in a little bit because I'm having a little trouble selecting the elements okay so this is the discounted price so I'm just gonna show over here discounted price and then I'm gonna select this and this will be the original price. If I can select it, cheer for me. 
there we go. I got it. If oh, just a, a small tip, like if you're ever having trouble like that selecting, uh, you can also open up the layers panel and that makes it easier to select things. Just sometimes I get lazy. So I, <laughs> I try the long hard way instead of the easy short way, um, ironically. And then if you go to the code panel, then here, this is going to be the original price. Awesome. And let's see what else we want to do at this initial stage. So I'm also going to do this banner over here. Uh, so here I'm going to call this banner. Okay, so we're going to start by connecting those uh, initial few uh, data points. And later on, we're going to talk about some of the more complex ones, such as connecting the media and connecting these different drop down options, etc. So now let's head into our code. And let's select those elements that we just named. So we have the product name. And we have the original price. And we have the discounted price. And we have the banner. As for the SKU, we're going to talk about that in a moment because that's a little uh, more complicated to deal with. Um, so here we're going to essentially get the data now from this product and assign it to each one of those each one of these things. And if you ever need to, you can just head over to the data that we saw in preview mode. And what I'm going to do to make this a little easier is I'm going to copy this as an example of the data. So I'm just going to go over here and click copy JSON. And I'm going to copy this over into my IDE and just put that right over here on the bottom. Comment it out just so that I can reference it as I'm writing my code. So for the product name, uh, that is going to be. Uh, let me go down and see where is the name. Let me see if I could search for name. Name. Okay, so product name is just going to be name. So this is going to be dot text equals to product dot name. Okay, so and we're just going to go on like this for all of these. So dot text dot text dot text. So original price is going to be Let's see price. So that will be formatted price equals product dot formatted price. And for the discounted price, that's going to be equal to product dot discounted price. And for the banner, let's see. Let's see banner. No, it might be called something else inside of the product data itself. I think it might be ribbons. Oh, ribbon. It's called ribbon. So banner is going to be ribbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to change the name of what I wrote to ribbon. Just because I like to keep the names as consistent as possible because otherwise it gets confusing. Here it's called banner here. It's called ribbon and I'm going to change that on the page itself uh, in a moment. So this is going to be equal to product dot ribbon. Now uh, regarding the SKU. So if you recall, we called our um, SKU product SKU. And the reason I wanted to highlight this is because specifically for these current products, um, they have an SKU over here. But you'll want to note that there are also different SKUs for individual variants of a product. So if your product has variants, then you might have different SKUs for those specific variants. And you might have one SKU that's kind of the generic SKU to be to be honest, I don't have my own e commerce store. So I'm not so familiar with SKUs and how they work. But I know that data wise, that's how it works. So you might have different SKUs for variants uh, with inside of Wix. So you'll have to note that this product SKU now that we're going to be displaying at the moment is going to be that generic SKU. But 
if you wanted to show specific SKUs for different product variants, that's a little more complicated to set up and we can talk about that a little later on in the tutorial. So for now, I'm just going to say that the SKU.text is equal to product.text. In addition to just assigning these values to the specific elements, some of these elements also require us to set up some behavior. And that's because um, if you recall in, from the products list tutorial that, for example, formatted price and ribbon, we're only going to want to display if there actually is a discounted price and a ribbon. Okay, so if we don't have uh, a discount on this product or we don't have a ribbon on the product, then we don't want to actually display the ribbon. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add some if statements. So I'm going to say here if sorry, if product let me zoom in here, if product dot uh, ribbon. Okay, so if there is a ribbon for the product, then what we're going to do is we're going to expand this ribbon. Sorry, we're going to show this ribbon. And again, these are it's highlighted with an error now because I haven't changed the name back in the editor. And this if statement just for your knowledge is exactly the same as writing the if statement like this. Okay, it's just a little, it's a slightly more concise way of writing. Um, let me format my code. Awesome. And for the discounted price, what we're going to do is only if there is, let's see. Okay, so we're going to compare between the discounted price and the, let me actually go back to the code that we did for the list page. And let's see what we did there. And we can do the same thing here. So I'm going to the shop list page. And what we did here is we said that if item data dot price equals to, so this is where I am over here, if item data dot price equals to item data dot discounted price, then we're going to hide the original price. So let me just copy that right over because that's exactly what we need now for this page. And I'm going to paste that right over here. Um, so that's going to be, let's put it before our original price. Uh, and instead of item data, we're just going to have product and product. And instead of item, it's going to be dollar sign W and awesome. So that looks pretty good. Um, yeah, we could also change the, we could have a similar logic here. So for example, if we don't have the product.ribbon, then we'll hide the ribbon. Okay, just to keep our logic consistent between these two um, actions that we have over here. So it's looking good. Uh, I'm just going to do one thing, which is I'm going to grab all of this and I'm going to put it inside of a function. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say uh, function right over here and populate product data. And I'm going to put this all inside of that function. And I'm going to call this function here in my on ready. And that's just to keep my cone, my cone, my code a little cleaner. Uh, and we still are going to do some cleanup here because I'm not liking how this code looks so much, but we'll do that a little later on. And I think we're good to start testing this out. So let me go back into the editor and I'm going to go over here and click edit site. And I'm just going to make sure that our ribbon is changed here. Okay, so actually, I noticed one small mistake that I did is that this I called banner. This I didn't call anything, but this is essentially the text which needs to display the ribbon. So let's fix that up. So this is going to be the ribbon. Okay, the text inside here. And outside here, this will be the ribbon, ribbon wrapper. 
Okay. And now I'm going to go back to the IDE. And what we're going to be hiding here is not the ribbon, but the ribbon wrapper. Okay, so small change over there. And for some reason, it can't find the ribbon wrapper. Let me try syncing over here. I'm going to try syncing back to my original site. Let me try running a sync there. Okay, it's still showing an error, but I'm pretty sure that that is the name that I gave it. Oh, no, I actually didn't. I called it Robin Wrapper. <laughs> so let's change that into Ribbon Wrapper. See, I was about to blame Wix, but it was actually my bad this time. Uh, so there we go, Ribbon Wrapper and the error has disappeared. Okay, so let's take a look and see if we can see this working in preview mode. So I'm going to go into preview mode. And yeah, so you can see here that so this one, I guess, doesn't have a ribbon. Uh, so we don't have see any ribbon. We see here the uh, product and we see here the price. We don't see an SKU. Um, that may have to do with what I was saying before about the variance and the original SKU. And let me try checking out some other products here. Yeah, so you can see as I change it, it changes the values over here. Product 7 concealer. I see that the prices don't seem to be changing. They may all be the same price. Let's see. No, so that's a bit worrying that these prices are not changing. Let's see if we have any errors here. Yeah, so this is not discounted price. Okay, sorry. So here we want to use formatted discounted price. That's one mistake that we have here. And I'll show you that in the code in a moment. And in terms of the SKU, so here we do have the SKU 009, but it's not displaying over here for some reason. So let's hop back into our code. And here, one mistake here is that this, instead of being discounted price, this should be formatted discounted price. That's why it wasn't showing, wasn't changing the prices before. And in terms of our SKU, so here I accidentally wrote product.txt and this should be product.sku. Yeah, so that's life. You're going to have bugs and 90% of them are going to be typos. Uh, so let's go over here back to the site and we should be able to see these changes happening instantaneously. Yeah, so now we can see the SKU and we can see the prices uh, changing as well for each individual product. I don't recall if which products have a ribbon and which don't. I think there was only like one product with a ribbon. Let me go back to our product list page and see if I can see here which one has a ribbon. So product 15 body scrub should have a ribbon. So let me go over here, product 15 body scrub. Yeah, and it's showing the ribbon. Okay, so that's uh, working. So essentially now we have successfully connected the basic data from the product to our custom product page. And now we're going to be doing something similar, but just for some slightly more complex arrangements. So this, um, the media over here and our option drop downs, and these require a little more code manipulation in order to convert the data from the product into something that we can actually use on our product page. But that's basically gonna wrap it up for today's video. If you all did enjoy, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel for more Wix and Wix Studio content coming out really soon. Again, I wanna give a special shout out to Aton from the WixWiz YouTube channel. This series would not be possible without him, so I'm really appreciative for him. But thank you again for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.